Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Feel Better Eating. This is a whole food plant-based experience that has the intention of educating you about the health benefits of eating a plant-based diet, inspire you to try new recipes and Catherine wants the third bit. Have fun. Have fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. Today's recipe is definitely a certified banger. It has very simple ingredients but a rather elaborate process at least from my perspective. So this is one that if you are going to dive into it is going to take some commitment and watching Catherine master this over the last eight, ten weeks. I wouldn't say master is the word, but... On your way, apprenticing, <laughs> apprenticing to mastery yeah. has been really beautiful to watch and enjoy because it produces bread, which I've been enjoying. Yeah. Even the experimental bread, that mm -hmm. maybe you went a little bit off course because it does require some skill, but more patience and commitment. We're making sourdough today. Catherine, oh, I'm Joshua, by the way. This is Catherine, my wonderful wife and co-host. Excited to be here live for this audience in Michigan City in Indiana. Catherine, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you, Joshua. I'm good per usual. I don't know if I've ever said that I'm terrible at the beginning of this Wouldn't show. Wouldn't be a good start, no. would it, though? No. But today we are making sourdough, as he's implied, and it's been a journey. I've been on and off with sourdough. I've decided to get right back into it. And through this process, I've been personalizing it to make it work for me. And with the way that that looks is instead of making always a big loaf, it's making mini, mini loaves that are easy to work with and navigate and don't add so much stress up. Is it gonna rise? Is it not gonna rise? So, and I've consolidated a few different processes to something that is easy and it works for me. So I hope that through this process today of showing you how I do sourdough, maybe you feel a little bit more confident to get in, into it if you want to or simplify it for your life and make it work for you. And because the process is multi-stage mm. for the sake of this show, we're actually going to do the process in reverse. So you'll see every element of it and we'll have the finished bread in 28, 29 minutes or so. But we're going to do the last part of the process first. Yeah. So if you're making this at home, it's actually going to be inverse, but just to set that context so everybody here can enjoy some bread rather than waiting. 24 hours, that would be a very long show, wouldn't it? Yeah. So Catherine, talk us through it. We'll start with put this one over here. Okay, so this ultimately is the finished product of your efforts. So after I fed the starter, I made the dough, I let it sit, it rose, rose again, I folded it a little bit, and then it's now here. So the process to that I got here is I only used my rubber spatula once to get the loaf looking like it does now where it's it's kind of bubbly and if you see this line around the side that was where it originally was this morning so it like in the car collapsed a little bit because there were so many air bubbles it went bloop, and it dropped but that's okay because we're just going to fold it again and from this space we're going to make it into mini loaves or balls of such and so we've got a, a a process where you can either boil it before you bake it, and that's what you do for bagel recipes. I don't know if anyone knows this, but for bagels, you boil the dough with baking soda and maple syrup, maple syrup or whatever liquid sugar that you have for two minutes, and then you bake it. So that expedites the process. So this is cold. I kept this in the fridge, and I took it out of the fridge, and then you boil it, so, and then you put it in the oven, but well, you don't necessarily have to do it. Let's just go through the process, okay. show, us, show us the way. Show us the way. So is the oven preheated, yep. basically? Well, is the water boiling? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, we don't want things to be sitting for too long, but okay. So the first time that I did this, the boiling process, my dough was room temperature and the whole thing disintegrated in the boiling water. So I learned that you have to have the dough cold from the freezer or the fridge. And also the first time I did it is I had it in balls in the fridge and they completely flattened out. So now my process is refined to taking cold dough, forming it into balls immediately, and then boiling it and then baking it. So we're gonna see this happen in real time. And we're gonna get into what this is, but in I'm just in a minute what this water is. Mystery water. Mystery gross looking water. But I'm just gonna clear this dough down the sides you know what? I think I forgot parchment paper, but there's, I think there's wax paper here, isn't it? Yeah. So as you can see, it's 
clearing off the sides pretty well. So that's a good sign, but the wet spatula helps with that process. And then for something that comes really in handy for making sourdough is a scale, a food scale, and they're really affordable on Amazon and they last you a while, so. You need a sheet wax paper down? Um, just open it, please, and rip a piece off. I feel like I'm gonna run out of room immediately, but. Okay. This is my first class on sourdough, so thank you all for being patient with me. Okay, so what we're going to do first to form these into balls is we're going to, we need to use a flour because this is going to be really sticky. So your hands are going to stick to this if you're not careful and it's going to stick to your scale. So what I've just learned the other past day but is really useful is you, you put some flour on your scale and that will stop your dough from sticking when you measure out what size your balls are. You don't have to measure out if you don't want to, but it makes it so you're more consistent. What we're using here is an unbleached organic flour. Unbleached is necessary because if your flour is bleached, it's going to kill the natural bacteria that exists within sourdough. So it's going to be hard for them to see my flour in certain It's okay. You'll get it. You can, can see, see it? it? Okay. Yeah. So this is, welcome to the process, guys. This is our kitchen every day now, well, pretty yeah. much. So as I'm doing this, I'll, I'll get the first one done and then we'll we'll show the yeah we'll tell you some facts about sourdough. Mystery so this, water so this spatula. Is, yeah. So this is where the, the process gets a bit messy. So I've measured it out so that I know that each one should be about 160 grams. So I basically just scoop it out, put it on here. That one's 178. Well, oh, whatever. Close enough, right? This is the imperfect sourdough <laughs> experience. So then, since this is floured, it should just plop right there, and then I'll reflower that with what I've got here, and then it'll stop it from splitting. So. Oh, I've got flour on me. It's begun. It's begun. A That's nice black shirt. Started. Yeah. So, <laughs> flouring it makes um, sure that it's not sticking together, and then. You don't want too much flour getting trapped because then you'll have like flour pockets. But I basically just, I kind of like manhandle it until it looks like a ball. And then I dust it. And then like, I don't overthink it. I'm like, this looks like a ball. This is a loaf. Good. <laughs> and then you do it again for the next one. So I keep them here because I'm gonna form them again before I boil them. But that one's, that one's sorted. That one's done. Okay, so we're gonna flower the surface here. Flowering. Is this making sense so far? Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. It's actually not really that. Oh, see, there's just the stickiness. The stickiness has arrived. Well, oh, that's that a one's thick a big boy, one. That. Go that off. Trim some fat <laughs> off that one. Bit 186. More. Go on. Yeah, there you okay. go. Okay, 162. Get it on. All right. Flop. Well, now you know the process, honey. Maybe you can help a little bit. <laughs> Put me to work. Right, I can wait it out. So normally the sourdough folding process is like you fold in half and then you fold in half again and then you kind of like, I don't know, fold in half again, tuck it, ball it. And you, you're trying to keep the high You're up. trying to keep the seam underneath and the round part on top. So look, another ball. Perfect. And I love these mini loaves. Excuse you, sir. <laughs> because it, it, see look, now you're going to get that stuck to the wax paper. I should have just been compensating. Yeah, now look. <laughs> I should have just been commentating. Why like that? Using... I just put enough flour on. Well, because you're literally scraping it onto the paper, mm -hmm. so now it's gonna get stuck to the paper. All right. Well, we'll just see. This is something that can happen to you when you don't flour your wax paper. I do flour. Not enough flour. Well, you literally scraped the sourdough onto that, that so now it's gonna stick. There you go. That's fine. Was mine sticking that much? You're a professional. You're further along the apprenticeship than me. All right. We'll just restart. So you just gotta make sure this is really flour, honey, or it's gonna be a nightmare. Flour. Oh, this is good that you're teaching me in real time. Yeah. There we go. Good deal. <laughs> We're back. Okay. So sourdough, actually, they believe it may have been an accident, the discovery of sourdough. Like in 1500 BC or something, 
with the Egyptians, like maybe some oats got left out and they noticed it rose and it smelled a bit different. And they're like, hmm, this is interesting. And since they already were doing a process of making beer, they understood the fermentation process. And so when they saw that the, the accidental loaf rose and then they were like, oh, this is really useful. And then they baked it and they noticed the bread was lighter and airier because it had the air bubbles in it. Then they were like, this is great. And then sourdough from then on became a staple in, a food staple in all across the world. And now it's so elaborate. I'm part of some sourdough groups and the loaves that people make are astoundingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like art, works of art. And I'm like, whoa. And this is something that hasn't really come inherent to me. Like I, I bake a lot of things, I cook a lot of things and feel like I'm good, but sourdough is one of those things. It's just been a, it's been a journey and it's been a struggle. And I, maybe a lot of people have felt that way and not wanted to do it. But once you get into it, you get a lot of bread and it, it's just. Definitely I, an art form. So like say for this recipe that I've given you, you, you should get about eight buns, eight mini loaves, right. which is like, one a day for me and Joshua, or two a day if he's feeling very hungry. But they work really well for sandwich bread when you cut them in half. They work well, like they're basically a bun, but you also, they're just good for avocado toast. They're good for everything. Oven's ready. All right, great. So once we get these all folded and maneuvered. <laughs> that is the word, maneuvered. Then we'll get them to boil. See, look how much I've learned on this show. Yeah. More flour. <laughs> More flour? It's always the answer. Uh, oh, tell them about the, the uh, way that you manipulate the flowers to save costs. That was good. Okay. Yeah, I'll talk about that maybe yeah, 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 you right now. Soon. Okay, so as you can see, we're using this organic, all purpose, um, unbleached flour from the store. But I like to use as well, like a whole wheat icorn. Ecorn? Einkorn. Einkorn. Whatever that is. And uh, rye. So you can have a dark rye, or a regular rye. And all these flowers cost something different. And when you look, thinking 100, 650 grams of flour, um, that's almost like half of one of these. So you can go through flour quite quickly. And so you want to strategize the flour that costs the least, use the most of. Yeah, especially for this, like the dust in this is the cheapest yeah. one. So, since this one is the most affordable, we, you would use that for the bulk. So like, say for when I'm making that recipe that you see there, I would use 650, I would use 500 grams of whole wheat, and then I would use only 150 grams of rye, because the rye is more expensive than just the whole wheat by itself. That's gonna be a big one, but. Did we get eight? Uh, seven. Seven? Oh, yeah. shoot. What happened? Well, our calculations were somewhat off, but I you can know. see, look, that one was way better. You get, you got it now. I'm so happy We're for all you. learning here. We are all learning. Where's my uh, special tool? Oh, it's there. Special tool? The lifter thing. Yeah, this is a big one, honey. Yeah, well, it's either that or you have a small one. So, I guess big is beautiful. Big and beautiful. You really got that nailed down. Did you bring the razor? No, we're just gonna use a knife. Okay. Do you want? Do you need to get a knife from the side cupboard? I'm sorry. I no, you good. To. See how these are already falling? Yeah. So that's why I like to um, keep them all here before I boil them because I'm gonna try to like plop them up a little bit before I boil them. So hopefully the flour stays on the bottom of them. I'll put the knife. They're sliding a bit. They're sliding pretty well now. So honestly, from here, I tried this yesterday and it did work. You have these little buns, you, you cut them. So the process for sourdough is you always have to cut it to let the air out because when it expands, it needs air to release. So usually you just, some people do a C shape or an X shape. It's, it's called scoring. And if you look up like scoring designs, you can find a variety of scoring designs on the internet. This is just, I just like to keep it simple, so I usually do an X, I do an X on these little buns. But that way the air is gonna release and it's gonna expand. So from here, you could use, you could just X all of them, put them on a heavy weight baking thing. So I like to use this stoneware um, from Pampered Chef. 
but you could use a flat cast iron as well. People use usually like those Dutch oven pots with a big sourdough. But uh, we think that the loaves are more moist and more delicious when we boil them first. So it is an extra process, but we think that it really pays off. So what you do is you get a big pot of water boiling and then you add a tablespoon of baking soda and a tablespoon of sugar. And then you're going to plop them in the water and flip them. So I brought the tool on Where is it? Uh. Oh. Woo. So Joshua just got the first one in and we'll see what happens. We have like a little timer at home that helps us with it, but we found this tool right here is like a, it's a slotted spoon that's actually really popular for like when you're frying food yeah. and you can get them on Amazon. What did we pay for two of them? 15 bucks. Like 15 bucks. And we found that it's a lot better than using just a spatula because when you're picking them up, you got to let the water drain before you plop them back onto here. So do we have a knife out? Uh, no. And keep in mind, this is the imperfect sourdough. They keep all the knives over there, so you're going to have to go somewhere else to get it. I'm going to have to go on anyway. Grab it. Grab so how long do you leave that water? For like a minute. A minute and a half each side. Flip it, flip it. These are... Oh, jeez. Um, you can use scissors, right? Oh, I've got a knife in my bag. Can't you use scissors? Scissors? I don't think so. Now my bag's covered. My purse is covered. Everything will be covered in flour. All right. We're just going to use this knife. Give it clean. It looks clean. I don't see dirty knives. There we go. So they're going to turn out looking a bit weird, <laughs> but it's it's like all part of the process of like I don't know why these are coming apart so much today. They're all right. I'll be fine. It's obviously tricky because the dough has been transported an hour in a hot car and it was kind of cold and then it sank. Yeah. There's moving parts that we can't account for. And but this is the whole process of just accepting imperfect bread because it's still going to come out like squishy, flavorful, with a soury taste. So look, now you've got like this moist bun thing and this has sped up the cooking process. And then can you guys see from there? I know Kevin, maybe it's a bit difficult, but we're gonna, I'm just gonna cut an X into it. Cut an X into the top. And I'll bring it closer as well so you guys can see in the mirror. But. So where I've created the X, you can see how the, the dough became a darker color and it's kind of lighter. Can you see it in the mirror? It's kind of lighter in the crevices where it's yeah. already expanding and it's already cooking. So that one fell apart a little bit, but they did rise a bit from the cooking process. So this, I don't know, that one looked a bit weird. That's very weird. No, <laughs> but it was, it just, it still, this is the process of being. It was still taste delicious. Yeah. That's all that matters. So originally I was doing this like, you know, because this is a bagel recipe is what you do is you boil the bagels. But I was like, I don't want the hole in there. I just want it to be a regular mini loaf. So that's why I changed. That's when I changed the process to be with just the mini buns instead. See, that one looks like it has like a flower pocket stuck in it or something. Those ones look good. Mm -hmm. They're really floating to the top. Yeah, they're good. So that's really useful. I missed the only time. But... Yeah, we've got like a remote timer that you just hit a button and it. Yeah. My mom let us borrow her stone. Jules. Um, we'll get that on. You know, like those pampered chef parties? Yeah. That's where she got this one. But I actually thankfully found mine at Goodwill, but it is still pampered, pampered chef, I'm pretty sure. Um, but see, look how useful this spoon is in the process. It fits the buns perfectly, like it's a little circle. Well, so the way that I folded these, they seem to be falling apart, which is kind of annoying. That one's like in half. Oh, God. Folks, none of them get it's okay. Right. This is why we love them, chat. It will form back together. I don't know what's going on. What is it? I don't even think I have to cut this one. This one's basically in half somehow. But 
This is why it's back to front, because you guys are seeing the finished product, and then we're going to reverse and show you how we got here, essentially. Well, show you the theory. Yeah, theory. theory. I've never seen them fall apart like that before. I'm not trying to focus on the negatives, but I have never seen it do this for me. Me before. As I said, the dough's, that one been, looks really pretty. the dough's been sat for an hour. No, Oops. two hours. Yeah, usually like right away in the morning, what you saw, I just bake it up real fast. But that's you not. Know. When the dough heats up, it falls apart. Right. When it's cold, it, it stays compact enough to where it boils. And then as it bakes, it holds the shape. I'm going to get this one now. Yeah, get it. That's cute. So you put them in the refrigerator, the dough? Yeah, overnight. Overnight. Yeah, we'll, you put the fridge and we'll talk overnight. through that process in a minute, but it's all about temperature. There's a lot of moving parts in sourdough. It's definitely not just the... Uh, I've got it. Oh. Go on. Start. Time. Time. I mean, it's time. Oh. <laughs> all right, relax. Just turn it off on me. All right, well, oh, too something as well as on the flour, there's a, there's a big movement going on for people to mill their flour at home themselves. So they buy whole wheat berries, and then there's this machine that will turn your whole wheat grain berries into flour in real time. And so you have the freshest flour that you can possibly have because you have to keep your flour airtight. That's why I have all of mine in plastic baggies because the longer that the flour is exposed to air, it loses its life and nutrients, and then it won't make into sourdough the way that you want it to. Great job, honey. So sometimes if you don't cut deep enough into the loaf, it will reseal up and then trap the air, and then it doesn't rise as much as you want to. But. Okay. All right, thanks, honey. How long are we baking these for? So, on the last we've got a temperature reader. It's alright, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I packed everything else. Okay, so we're going to put them in the oven for 20 minutes. That's what I'm finding on average. 20 minutes and then I check on them. And then I test the internal temperature. You're looking for an internal temperature of 205. So, Which usually that takes 20 minutes in the oven. I temperature check it and usually takes eight minutes to reach that temperature and then it's with done. the oven on or off? Either on, way. the oven on. Let's go into the... Did you turn that off? Yep. Okay. So that was the end part of the process and maybe when we publish this video we could do it back to front. <laughs> I don't know, I think it would I don't know, that would be weird. Uh, so now we're going to fold, right? Yes. I'm going to put this flour back in the bag though. Oh, what? Some people may think that's gross but... We live in tar flour. It's our flour. We so. do what we want. Um, can you make sure that the bag stays open? Right now? We've made a little bit of a mess. So I thought you were folding this one, though. I am. Oh. Okay. So in the whole reverse sourdough phase, this one, you see how it's a less sturdier. It's like yeah. gooey and bubbly. Yeah. So this one, I made it on the first day like with the starter and the fresh flour. And then I folded it once and then I let it set. No, I didn't even think I folded it. I let it set overnight. And it was all the way up here this morning. It's warm, like when I put my hand to it, it's like emitting heat because it's fermenting. It's like alive. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going to spatula. Clean. It's okay. So I'm gonna explain what this is now. So this is- This is cool. This is yeast water. So you leave water out with the lid off. I just put the lid on to transport it. And all of the bacteria and yeast from the environment goes into your water, which is kind of gross, but without it, you don't have it. So I think that's really cool. Like usually that. like in recipes, they use like the little yeast powder to make yeast, but in sourdough, you use the environmental yeast to rise your bread. And that's why there is so much variance and why sourdough is tricky because everybody's environment is different everybody's kitchen humidity temperature amount of yeast in the air is different so you, it's not like the recipe we've given you will work but you have to adjust it for your own surroundings which i mm -hmm. think is difficult but really cool that it, it just goes really in cool. there from the air and it captures it in and this helps it 
go through the fermenting process and before we did this we didn't have anywhere near as consistent yields did we no we and were then, just using water straight from our berkey filter but now we started leaving this out 24 7. i after every time after i use it i have a little bit left and then i just retop it up and something that i've done I don't, i've never read this anywhere but this is something i just kind of followed my intuition on and started doing is i keep I'm, the reason it's a yellowish color is because when I'm done with my sourdough or I'm using my sourdough and I've had some left on the spatula, I just put it in there because it's like whatever is cooking in here yeasty wise, it goes back in the water and it makes it even stronger yeasty. It seems to be working, so. It's definitely working. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, you see how it's like stringy? That's like what you want your, you want your sourdough to be something that has form to it and every time that you fold your sourdough it, uh, dough it becomes stronger so that's why some sourdough recipes have you folding your sourdough like every two hours which is a lot which is a lot it's like some who people has time for that really bring their some people bring their sourdough bread with them to the store <laughs> really to work what yeah because they're so committed to folding it so often and it works for the, a lot of people, but I couldn't do that. I mean, you'd expect that, but not for me. Yeah, I fold mine maybe like once or twice yeah. when I remember, but this one's really gooey. This is probably the gooeyest loaf I've ever had. And gooey is good, right? I, not good? I don't know. It does look good. It's a very intu uh, intuitive process, but and I'm just really scraping the side sour. and just... If you have a bread machine, it will technically do all of this for you, but... Hmm. You're the bread machine in our house. Yeah. That's so gooey. It's because I've used this flour and I'm used to using these ones. Yeah. So, but after you fold this a few times, you can let it sit out longer if you want. Or from here, you put it in the fridge. So like, this morning it was risen. And then I was like, and then I folded it a few times throughout the day and then I would put it in the fridge to sit overnight and then the next morning I would bake it. Does yeah. that make sense? This is like the middle part of the recipe so. Yes. This was like from starter flour, put that in there, it sat overnight for eight hours and it rose to the top and now we're moving it a little bit. It's this bubbly alive mixture and it will make really great breads. And then when this sits overnight tonight we'll have the, the dough that we just made to boil. Yeah. So there's a timeline going on here. And then you cover it with this, right? Yeah. Right. I really can't believe people take their sourdough to the store. Like a baby, they put it in the baby holder. <laughs> I bet they do, Strap yeah. it in. How old is he? Because you got to keep it your sourdough warm. So if you have struggles with it rising, you got to make sure it's in a warm place. Because all of our houses are relatively cool. Mm -hmm. So... Since I'm always baking now, I tend to always have like a warm oven, which is useful. This is clutch, yeah, reusable so seal. The person that brought, got me back into sourdough, she showed me these, which are like just food covers that you can get on Amazon. But it's really effective at holding in the moisture because when you're letting your dough sit and ferment, you don't want it to be drafty and dry. You want it to be moist and warm. Yep. So this traps the heat and the humidity. And so this from is here, go into the fridge. Yep, we're gonna put it in the fridge, and it's gonna like slow down the fermentation process and harden it a little bit. And so then by tomorrow, I'm gonna I could just boil it and bake it and have more bread. More bread. Okay, so now. So now this is the first part of the process. <laughs> yeah. This is how you. Does this need to be cleaned? No, it's fine. Okay, we go. Bowl. Okay. What's this, Catherine? This is the easiest part. What is this? So this is the starter. <coughs> and the starter is basically like a mini version of what we just put in the fridge. So it's the original fermented flour and water. Yeah, and this is technically a live. Mm -hmm. This it's is depending alive. on how you view live, so but it's respirating all the time. It's really gross. I don't know how people keep clean sourdough jars. I've tried and it's just not working. For and me. how old is this one? I don't know how old Lori's was. It, a few months old, but these can live like yeah, decades. Decades. And they People have keep the same sourdough things alive for decades. decades. And there's they some are like a hundred years old. Yeah, over hundred. I don't know what the world record is for the oldest, but it's over a hundred years old. 
and they you feed it every day and people believe that the older it gets the more sour it gets so there's bakeries that I've been to where they have it in a big box and it's like 150 years old and they feed it every day and keep it alive mm. and people name them like yeah, babies. they do, to, keep, to help I, them like keep it alive rationally in their yeah. head. And I had one for about six weeks once and then it went. Yeah. That was pretty good. Okay, so once again the line kind of indicates but after you feed the sourdough it will rise. So after I fed, I fed this last night and it rose all the way to this line where you can see the hardened line and then it fell again. And once it's fallen again, that's when you know you can use it for doughs mm. because it's hungry. It wants to eat again. And so you give it a lot of flour now. So we're gonna- It is a strange process, It is so it? strange. It, you can see why it's addicting though because you just kind of want to keep iterating it until you figure it out. Yeah. So we're, we're back to the trusty scale. We're gonna put our bowl on top of the scale, zero it. Um, you can't see the zeroing process, no, but fine. okay. And then to follow the recipe, we're going to do 165 grams of this. Oh, go on, go on, go on, <laughs> go on. <laughs> Don't do 160. Ah! How many? If it goes <gasps> over, it's fine. 166. Oh, 166. That's it. Recipe over. So I don't really have that much left in here, but we're gonna feed it. So don't, you don't have to oh. cover it. We're gonna feed her. Feed her. Okay, so feed we have 165 grams in there. Zero. Yeast water. Now we're gonna add yeast, 400 grams of yeast water. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> You're not even close. Yes, I am. I went three eighty-two. You got the yips you have. Pouring yips. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, we we're at four hundred four, but it's fine. It doesn't have to be exact as that. Exact. I mean, if you have twenty extra grams, I would suggest maybe scooping some out. Okay. So then, after that lowers, I would obviously just fill it up again. And then get more yeast. And you want to use filtered water because if you use normal tap water with chlorine in it, it will, it will kill. kill the yeast water from your environment. Yeah. Okay. So we've got that, and now we need sugar. Maple syrup, please. So sugar is something that the fermenting yeasty boys, no, yeasty boys, yeasty of, boys, they like to eat sugar as well. So we feed them a bit of sugar. So we'll do 20 grams of sugar. And you can use honey here too, can't you? Yeah, I use molasses, I use honey. And, and they use... all make the, the, the breads taste slightly different and different colors, which is interesting. And you can make a gluten-free sourdough supposedly with gluten-free flours, but we, we, we found that. success with this because usually people with celiac disease or gluten problems, when they eat sourdough like this, they don't have as many issues. And that's because it's fermented, so it's easy to digest. Usually if food is fermented, part of the digestion process has already happened, so your body doesn't have to do as much work to digest it. Mm -hmm. That's why like sauerkraut is so good for your kombucha, all of these fermented foods. So we give that a quick stir and then we need another clean bowl, honey. So this is our, our wet, and then we're going to use a That was really pretty. Right, go Okay, on. so like I said, this is our most affordable flour, so we're going to go heavy on this one with like 500 grams. It's a trained hand, isn't it? Oh. It's because I lose myself in the numbers sometimes because I'm not a number person. I'm like, where am I? And I get confused if where I'm at. So that's 504 unit zero, right? Yeah. This is right. Hmm. No? It's because we're running low. We're running low. And something that I want to communicate is that your sourdough starter will do be do better if it's fed these flowers whole wheat and rye hmm. if it's fed a white flour it doesn't like it as much so just put more white flour in there okay. so we have 500 what we're we going for total 650. yes yeah. <laughs> bless you sir so how many it's 150 yeah, right 150, yeah. okay but usually i do add a variety of other ones but yeah. i've ran low and this is the only one we could find at the okay, store okay, okay. oh sorry shoot oh god that's good should we take some out no no you're fine okay 
we have to, have to add more yeasty water, we will. Okay. Watch this here. Yeah. So this is where your intuition is going to kick in. So you kind of measured accurately, kind of didn't. <laughs> and everyone's environment is different with heat and humidity. So we're going to add half of the flour at a time. Half of the... Oh, we forgot salt. Okay, we'll put it in. That looks about Okay, hot. yeah. I'm good at mixing. Do you want to grab the salt, please, hon? I still haven't figured out how to measure 10 grams of salt because every container I put on here and I zero it, it never registers just the salt. It. So I just kind of like whatever, whatever salt. Like, that That's, was fine. Whatever. That was about know. nine grams, that was. <laughs> I'm sure you know. Okay, so. Mix, mix, mix. Just getting it started. Scraping the sides of the can you, bowl. Can you smell it back there, what it smells like? Does it smell like bread in here? Yeah. Do you smell the bacon? Because from here, the, this, like... It stinks. It stinks, yeah. In a, it's like in a, a good, good way. Stink. If you use spelt flour, it kind of smells like piss. Yeah, it does smell like <laughs> urine. Piss. I don't know why. Honey, this is a PG rated show. Oh, was piss not a, an appropriate word? Probably not. Oh, sorry, Scraps guys. that, cut that. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I didn't mean to use inappropriate But yeah, don't use spell. We don't it smells use... smells okay, it's just... It's not okay, I mean. It smells terrible. And it tastes like uh, we're not using spell again. But honestly, if this process is too much for you, you try it and you're like, I just get irritated. There's no harm in supporting your local sourdough baker. baker. Because there's a ton of... If you if you type sourdough in a marketplace, Facebook guarantee market. you'll find someone. Somebody's selling Someone's it. Someone's selling it at home. And they're just trying to like, you know, a lot of mothers at home that just want to work from home and do what they love and they're good at it, you know, support them if you yeah. don't want to get into it. I totally understand. I support those people and like make we my still own buy, We still buy bread. We still yeah. buy it, yeah. Because everybody's is so different. That's what so I really different. like. It's like there's a unique element. And one theme of this show that I wanted to bring up obviously is about the bread and the taste of the bread, but it's also about the relationship between convenience and health. And obviously this is not a convenient process. This is something that Kate is doing. I wouldn't say it's a full-time job, but it's definitely like a daily task that you are doing. You're keeping up with it. You've always got it in the timeline. It's using up your mental bandwidth. So it's definitely not convenient. But if we compare the end result of sourdough, these sourdough loaves, yes, they taste good, but health-wise, they're so much healthier than just store-bought white bread. Like store-bought white bread is, got the most random in my opinion, not food. That yeah. is not food. If you look at what's in it, it's got so many preservatives in to keep it fresh. It's usually fresh. like bleached all-purpose it's, flour. It's bleached, so there's no nutrients in it. Your body doesn't know how to digest it. It causes real problems. And I, we haven't eaten store-bought bread for years. Probably like the best well, part. Well, the only ones we bought, bought were like the sprouted Ezekiel breads. Which isn't, yeah, sprouted Ezekiel breads. But because that sprouting process is it's similar. For your body. So whilst it may not be convenient, if the the convenience is paid, being paid for somewhere, and usually it's your health. Mm. So that's something to consider. And if you're blessed like me, you get a wife that's super into it. Support that and buy the flowers. <laughs> yeah. And eat the bread, even the tests. Because they all taste good. They do all taste good. Okay, and so then from here. This, this is where I said your intuition kicks in because you look at that and you're like, is that right? Is that what it's supposed to look like? Yeah, I have no idea. It, this is too dry in my opinion. So we're just gonna splash it with water. And that looks great. You're gonna try to get the, and then you're just gonna work it until the water gets absorbed into it. And you're gonna have this mushy dough and you want it to be more on the wet side because the wetness allows it to expand and grow the yeah. way that you need it to. So I kind of, I work the dough as it is. This flour is so different it than the ones I have. It is different, it is a lot different. That's fine. Looks like mashed potatoes almost. It does, it looks weird. <laughs> like a little alien blob. It is like a little alien blob. Okay, so once I have this, the water like really moisturized into it, I kind of like try to just form it into like a loose ball. It already is kind of like a loose ball. Looking great, huh? What happened to, oh, it's right there. So, do you want to put the towel over the other one, actually? Because this one needs to rise with that on there, and that one just needs to cool in the fridge, so. Usually I damp that one with the towel with water before I cover it, but. Okay. So this one, in the whole scheme of sourdough, is, this is the one that 
I usually make at night or in the morning. You can customize it for however you want to. I cover it, I leave it on top of my warm stove, mm -hmm. and then it's gonna Probably like quadruple double in size. size. Quadruple, I would say. It comes up sometimes near the brim of this bowl. Yeah, sometimes, like if I do it, if I make this in the morning, like I did right now in the afternoon, like two hours from now, I would give it a mix, a mix. But then I, I mostly want it to be sitting and feeding personally that's the way that I do sourdough so this is done and ready and in, since we fed it starter it's going to manifest all the flour and the yeast the water is going to work together and it's going to become this live thing that's bubbly that it, we call sourdough. It's be delicious I want to put this on so, top of the oven. Yeah put that on top of the oven please to stay warm. Okay and then we're on the last step of the reversal. Oh wait 21 seconds left. Too good they're really rising nicely though they're yeah. going to need longer than that. Whoa that's like the the puffiest they've been. Oh, would you look at that chap? I told you don't focus on that negative. Maybe it's the oven. Mm. We cook in like the old stuff and ever. Right, I'll cancel this and I'll put six, seven more minutes. Well, on. you didn't even look at them. I, I can tell. Should we show them though what it looks like after 20 minutes? No, Just on. take it out. It's fine. Really? It's fine. Trust me, I open my oven multiple times. Look at that, guys. Oh yeah, that's good. You see that? Yeah, that top one. See, they rose quite a bit, and they're like squishy, but they can probably they probably need at least another. We'll just do eight minutes just to be safe, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so the last step. So after I have that done and sitting on my oven, I'm like, okay, well I gotta get ready for the next time. So that's when I feed my starters and refill my yeast water. So. Like I said, I usually use the whole wheat in the rye. And you know how we always get these like random little measuring spoons? We do, seemingly in our life from everything. Yeah, well they always are selling them in protein powders mm -hmm. and mixes and whatever. So I think they're really useful for the feeding my starter. So I kind of go from that metric. Some people measure how much they're actually putting in, which is important because you have to think like, oh, I need 165 grams for my next recipe. So you have to make sure that you're adding enough to your starter to be able to make bread again. Because if not, you're going to deplete your entire starter and then where are you going to be? So I'm going to add Stop more. To this. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, add all of this there. here. Yeah, I'll put this and I'll, uh, Yeah, we need to go to, we need to get some more from the store. This is good. Try and tell you a bit, shall we? I don't know what we're going to do if I get rid of all this dry. Hold on, you'll be alright, we'll get rid okay. of it. I'm going to add some of this in there. Because if you notice, mine's really low and I don't want it to get too low. Because I I live under the belief that if it has, it has more, it's going to be stronger. I think that's probably true. Stronger start, you want to clean this up a bit? So this is another little in place where I follow my intuition. So I added all that flour, and then you add a little bit of your yeasty water. The yeasty boys, that's been the best part of this show though. The yeasty boys. And then, like the loaf, you don't want it to be dry in there, or it's not gonna rise. It likes a wet, moist environment, so we're gonna add more water. And I like to stir with a chopstick at home, but a butter knife works really well as well. That's right, yeah. So like, I guess thinking about viscosity, you want right. it to not be like hard to turn. You want it to be like a nice loose turn. Great word. It's one of my favorite words, viscosity. I viscosity. Think. Viscosity. Yeah. This if you is don't a get for it. Well. And if you get it wrong, you'll know. And there's a lot of people out there that help with sourdough and if you say like I can't get my starter to rise there'll be a blog about it. Oh a lot of blogs. At least like a hundred blogs about it. About a thousand different recipes. So I don't know if you guys can see the way that it's but like that's good. <laughs> yeah that looks good. So and then we, we want it to breathe so we put a little paper towel with a rubber band that's seen better days. Yeah, I probably, probably need a replacement. <laughs> it's probably seen its last legs that I think it was. And then this, we haven't named ours yet. Should we name it now? Sure. Yeah. Should we call it Grace? 
Grace Aww, Thompson. Oh, Todd yeah. Grace. Go on, Grace. That's sweet. Grace, so we'll put, I like that. We'll so put that there. Lovely. Uh, Grace. Yeah, thanks, Grace. And I like these jars too because they have the lines on it, so you so can you evaluate can where it how and how it's rising. If it's rising, like I forgot where it was at, but usually the line indicates where it's at. So, all right, that has been the sourdough mini lows. We got three minutes Back left to, to see front. these bad boys. Oh, oh, and if you don't get flour everywhere, does it even count? I've started using an apron. You should have bought that. It's cute. Yeah. That Look at my hands. It's disgusting. Right. Some people wear gloves. Well, All right, any questions or straightforward? I no. <laughs> it was a, a, a nice little conversation to help someone nap, which is good. Yeah, it's got to be napping. Okay, well, I guess we'll close this out, so. Yeah, we'll get, no, we're getting them out. Got a okay. Come on. As the Egyptians did, we are continuing to do. And, and obviously you can serve this with anything. I'll try to go yeah, so. There's different honey in the in the in the cupboard down there. There's like a jar of honey. What's your favorite bread topping? Do you have one? Bread like topping. butter oh, or yeah. butter? Real like butter. Real butter. Yeah. Grass fed butter. butter. We like oh. that honey would probably be good. I'm oh. just maple syrup too. And it says strawberry. Oh yeah. Joshua likes jam. I I've started making jam. jam at home because okay, that's something that's like so expensive at the store, which doesn't make any sense because it's literally just. I was gonna take these up. Just wow, that looks so great. Yeah, because we gotta get it to cool. Oh, we forgot our draw our cooling rack. Shoot, I don't know if they have a cooling rack here. Ta-da! So that one's obviously the prettiest. I don't know what happened spin to it. those, spin but spin it. Spin it. Spin it. Look at the pretty one. Only the pretty one. Huh. But still, even the ones that, like get massive, you can still cut that in half, and that's still like a good flat bun. Yeah. To work with, um, maybe we should put. T we gotta take them off of this though. I think if we want to be able to serve them, we'll let's just finish it. We'll use this. Okay. Ooh, nice find, honey. Spatula, please. It's funny how like rubber spatula and spatula are like considered the same thing, considering they're not. It's fine. Oh. So uh, stuck. Oh, we forgot to oil it. All right. Well, let's just do that after. Let's just finish it. <laughs> I usually oil this. Right, I forgot right. to mention that. Let's just finish that. it. Up. Okay, well this has been Imperfect Sourdough to show you that just because it's not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen doesn't mean it's not going to be delicious and useful for your family in a healthy way, in a convenient way. And they're delicious. And they are delicious. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll experience it shortly. Yeah, and if you've ever had issues with bread digestion but you like sandwiches like me, I don't get any of the issues from this. I just The only issue I have is I need to eat another one. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you usually like to eat two in a row and then I'm like, drink some water. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. Thanks. Thank you for your patience. I really hope that you try all this. It's definitely a lifestyle in a certain way, I think. And I'm really grateful that Kate has taken to this and continues to improve her skills because it really is a blessing to eat that. We've been Josh. well, we've been, I've been Joshua. This has been Catherine. We've been Feel Better Eating. This recipe is available on our website as always. And we really appreciate you watching. Much love. Thank you. Peace. Thank you, guys. Thank you to all of our show sponsors and supporters who make this show possible. The Healthcare Foundation of Laporte, Grace Learning Center, Citizens Concerned for the Homeless, and ALCO, Access Laporte County. We appreciate all of your support.